You're listening to The Right Club Podcast, where the focus is all about helping you grow your real estate investment portfolio and live the life you want to live. Come grow with us and join our community at therightclub.com. And now your hosts, Sarah Larby and Alfonso Salemi. So, I mean, obviously this is huge right now, but mm. like you said, it's going to be just as important afterwards, but I think it's huge right now because we've created from the pandemic, in my opinion, a pandemic on, you know, the mental, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but there's definitely at least a lot of instability um, and a lot of unknowns. And from a, uh, you know, mental health standpoint, I think there's going to be another pandemic coming out of the pandemic on mental well-being health, right yep. and so you know i so what are your thoughts on that well let's just pause i want to do if you don't mind i want to do a couple of definitions okay so one of the mistakes that society makes and it's through no fault of society's own but how media and other people talk about it is people sort of think they're either mentally healthy or not so i'm either mentally he healthy i'm fine quote unquote fine or there's something wrong rather than thinking of it that way it's best to think of mental health as a spectrum okay with mental well solid mental well-being on one side and mental illness on the other side and if you put a bell curve on top of that you can put that bell curve there for your day let's say most of us live in the middle of that bell curve most of us are actually not quote unquote mentally well all the time okay <laughs> one way or another we're a little bit nuts at some point through the course of the day so it, it's a mistake to be thinking that if you're stressed if you're anxious if you're experiencing a desire to stay home instead of going out any of these sorts of things you know mild depression stuff like that it's a mistake to think that you're ill you're just on the spectrum of, of mental well-being. We have sort of ups and downs throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, whatever it is, and that's absolutely fine. It's when you are depressed, staying at home, highly anxious to the point where, say, you're not able to drive very well or, or something like that for weeks at, at an, on weeks and weeks, you know, going on for weeks, then you're tipping over to the one side of the bell curve, which is like, I need to go and speak with a physician, or somebody like that. Um, but for most of our day, we're not amazingly happy. We have moments of real joy, and then we don't and we get on with things. So let's be clear that mental health well, to be honest with you, as from a psychological point of view, mental health is this spectrum which is diagnostic in nature. Okay, so there's a whole, it's called the DSM, um, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, blah, 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 um, with check boxes in it that people use to determine whether or not somebody is mentally healthy or mentally ill. So what I actually want most people to be talking about is simple mental well-being simple me mental well-being which is you know the whole gamut of of your mental your your state of mind so instead of talking about mental health which is really what the doctors talk about let's just talk about mental well-being am i feeling joyful today me eh, for the most part yeah i am oh good i'm fine do you know what i mean so but when we're always looking at mental health which unfortunately has such a terrible stigma to it um then there's either i'm mentally healthy or i'm mentally ill and just because you're having a bad day does not mean you're having a mental health crisis it means you're having a bad day okay so i just i sort of went around the houses there but think of your state of mind as mental well-being and that gives you the power to be more in control of that mental health is a, is a diagnostic and you can't be in control of your mental health you can be in control of your mental well-being so what are some tips I, I mean some of the one of the things that we've seen uh a little bit more of is some of the memes and on social media that come through and they you know they'll say hey one day i'm just rocking it i've been able to check everything off my list and you know be able to do this and this and the next day i'm 
I'm eating a full bag of chips and all the jujubes while, you know, doing a Netflix marathon, you know, with a blanket pulled over my head, which is basically what I think I hear you saying that, that it just yeah. kind of ebbs and flows. Yeah. But when we do find ourselves ebbing and flowing, what are some tips and tricks that you can give us to, first of all, for recognition and second of all, for trying to stay on, on as even a keel as possible? What you're talking about, though, one day rocking it and one day, you know, under the duvet with the remote control, that is even keel. As long as you're not mm -hmm. under the duvet for weeks or even days on end, there's nothing wrong with that. The, you know, we call it mental health breaks, too, don't we? You know, it, it's, yes. and people call in sick or something at work when they need a mental health break and they need, just need a day to themselves. That's even keel. It's the, the first tip, though, if you're under the duvet, is are you beating yourself up for it? Are you saying, I should be able to handle this? I should be able to get my butt out of bed and get to work. I should, I should, I should. And as anybody who's heard me speak before knows, shooting on yourself is not a good thing. So we don't like to shoot on ourselves. And notice how careful I am when I say that, because God knows I've screwed it up in presentations before. But the key thing is, is how are you being gentle with yourself? Because you also need to be gentle with yourself when you're really rocking it too, because guess what? You're not going to, nobody does that 24 seven. If you look at any autobiography of anybody who's really successful, not biography, autobiography, you will see it laced with comments about, I, I spent time investing in my mental well-being so that when those days came, I wasn't a brute to myself. I didn't talk to myself as if I was some sort of failure. I accepted those moments for what they were. I recognized them and then I moved forward when it was right for me to do so. That's what I mean, like, our, we have this illusion that we should, there's that word again, be able to just rock it all the time or, or rock it Monday to Friday or, you know, show up really, really well. One of the interesting things I've been observing over the last few months is the number of people who will now say out loud, you know what, I'm not having a good day. And everybody goes, oh, that's okay. You don't see anybody like on the other side of a Zoom call saying, well, aren't you a failure? But you know that the person has probably told themselves that at some point in the past. Nobody else would say it to you, but you're pretty good at saying it to yourself. Tip number one, when you're having that day that you're under the duvet, check in with what you're saying. That will give you a really good measure of your state of mind and your mental well-being. If you're not being a brute, you're just observing and saying, okay, I need this break today, excellent. If you're shooting anywhere, not so good. Mental well-being needs a little bit of work. But that's a great tip. I mean, at the end of the day, it's good because like, I'm sure we all have those days and we're like, oh my God, like everyone else is probably, you know, doing awesome. And here I am on social media looking at like what's happening with the politics and I'm angry. Like there's like tons of, tons of scenarios where I'm like, Am I the only one doing this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was on a I was on a call a few months ago with the head of a psychiatric hospital here in Ontario, and um, he was doing a, a big presentation on stuff. And he said a line which I thought was really really good. And there was all sorts of entrepreneurs on the line because, as we know, entrepreneurs and and you know business owners and stuff have been struggling a lot. And there's been uh, uh, increase in um, reported addictions and, and things like that so he was sort of he was, he's after a presentation of talking about what stress is and isn't he was he said to everybody on the call because somebody said to him you know i'm i'm stressed i'm having i'm barking at my husband i'm you know i'm i'm really short-tempered and i'm confused and i'm having trouble making decisions and i'm having trouble being com committed and he sort of said how long has this been going on and she said it goes up and down and and everybody's like yeah yeah okay i could see people nodding you know on the zoom call and then he turned around and he said if you weren't stressed and anxious right now you'd need to see me because something would not be connecting in your brain about the state that we're in. That, you know, so it's okay that you're stressed and anxious. 
what you do with it matters. So are you beating yourself up? Are you recognizing that it's gone on too long now? And maybe you do want to go and talk to a doctor or you do want to at least unload your concerns on somebody who can hear you and, and you know, deal with whatever it is that you're saying. So um, I was, I really, because that's what, that's what we in psychology will tell people. But it was really great of him to say, you know, if, if you're not stress, stressed and anxious, I would be surprised. You need to come and see me. Thanks for listening to the Right Club podcast and joining our community of real estate investors online at therightclub.com, where the focus is about helping you grow. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks from your hosts, Sarah Larby and Alfonso Salemi.